Hi again, this is Mike, the Philosopher Engineer. Welcome to another episode of Technical and Tactical. That's what I call TAT here. And in these episodes, I focus a little bit more on the technical area that with the engineering teams and what they can do to make things work better. So today's topic for Technical and Tactical is managing the technical knowledge base. Okay, now I think this is important and this week we're focusing on um, building our knowledge base, making it more accessible, making it more uh, usable, and maybe making it more modular. And I'll give a few examples and we'll kind of get into what I'm talking about here. Um, in all companies, we have a knowledge base, whether it's uh, sort of recognized or not, whether it's formal or not. Now, some of that knowledge base is captured in documents, obviously. It could be standard procedures, it could be test data, test reports, all sorts of things. We obviously capture a lot of data. And some of that is in a very accessible and usable form and some is not. Uh, so it's on our, on our computer systems, we can pull it up, that's great. In the technical area, we're working with a lot of data and in the development and design process, we often want to use that data and access it to make decisions. Maybe we want to try what if scenarios and experiment and that sort of thing. Now we already do this in an active way in one area in almost all companies, uh, and that is in CAD. So for design, we have uh, computer-aided design. They, nowadays with computers as powerful as they are, we can often run CAD from our laptop even, uh, or, or other computers. In some cases, we can bring that CAD into a conference room when we're talking about a problem and how to solve it, and maybe even do it live. Now that is what you call um, you know, a program in its native file or design in its native file. If you print it into PDF or other files that are dead, you can view it, but you can't modify it. But this is a, the same for a Word document or an Excel document or other things. The next level, I think, for a lot of these companies is to talk about the knowledge base in terms of a function. So we're designing things, you know, products, in this case, we're talking about products, maybe they're fairly complex technologies, and we want to know more than just the geometry. We want to know what we learned in, in the lab testing or the analysis, and then we'll have questions about that. And those relationships all come together in math. Now that math could be in an Excel file. And if you pull up an Excel file, you can sometimes structure it in such a way um, where you can modify it and, and experiment with it in, in the, uh, on the Excel document, and you can even do that live when it's important. And this can be done with other models as well. So when you um, invest all this engineering time and this analysis and testing the design, you start to really understand how the product behaves, how the functions work. If you organize that way, organize that information in a way that it's reusable, maybe modular and easily accessible, um, then it can accelerate the design and development process, which is their goal, or problem solving process. That's what we would want to pull up. And so beyond just using the CAD, just like the CAD, we can use this for uh, functions. Uh, it could be the design of a spring or a bearing or a gear or some plastic parts. And in those, we have all sorts of engineering tools um, that can be used by the right people, whether it's a, a map model or whether it's a simulation like a finite element model or something like that. And they can be made in a way uh, that can be reusable. So just something to think about as you're designing, instead of just dealing with the problem in front of you, you might think about it in modules that could be used again, because you're gonna invest a lot of time, a lot of money in each one of those areas. So whether you're designing a motor or gear, a bearing or some feature, in your product line, you're likely to see similar things in the future. So can you reuse some of that knowledge base on a future project and help that project go faster and learn from it? So part of that on the technical side and for the whole company is managing that knowledge base in a way that it's usable, that it helps you make decisions um, you know, more efficiently and more objectively too, make sure that your decisions are based on quantitative information. I think that's about it. I just kind of want to talk about that because here we're in a time period where we've all been uh, either shut down or partly shut down, maybe working remotely. And a lot of these things can be started before we get back to full normal work mode. And these are proactive steps we can take that will save time later, that will help us make decisions faster and better, and will accelerate our projects. So proactive activity here in the technical area feeds into proactive uh, work and preparation for the whole company and that will prepare us for the next phase of growth and we may see a big phase of growth So that's our part of it. How do we organize it? 
Um, if you have more questions about this, you could reach out to me and ask me. I've worked with several companies to help them build these math models, not just the CAD models, but the models that simulate how that system works. And they're pretty easy to use, and you can use them to look at what-if scenarios. If you have a client that wants a product to be a little different, you can quickly do that analysis, that assessment, and come back with a response um, in a much quicker manner. And that's helpful to everybody. That's, it's just a big win. All right, so managing the technical knowledge base. That's in the technical and tactical tip for the day. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Uh, I enjoy these conversations and would love to help you. All right, take care. Have a great week. Bye.